If you're looking to design comprehensive learning experiences or become an instructional designer, then you're going to want to know about Gagne's nine events. Gagne's nine events include all of the research-backed conditions that are necessary for learning to take place. So you can use these events to craft lesson plans or create your e-learning storyboards. And these events are really good, especially for new instructional de designers, because they're very um, concrete and they can serve almost as a blueprint for your learning experience. So let's dive into it. Here are the nine events, and we are going to cover each one of these in detail. So the first one up is gain attention. Now I want to say all of these events, they don't have to necessarily be done in order, but most of the time you do want to start by gaining your audience's attention. And this can be done in, in quite a few ways. Um, I think Gagne presents this as a change in stimulus with a simple example of like turning the lights on and off in a classroom to direct everyone's attention to the learning experience. But you can also do this with an engaging story with maybe an engaging video, animation, audio clip, or even interaction, um, and a thought-provoking question, just to, again, orient people to the learning experience and, and try to get everyone focused on what's about to come. So you can be creative with how you gain attention, but you do wanna, you know, you do wanna pay attention to this, this event, because if you're just diving right into some really dry content, people probably aren't going to be super attentive to it. The next event is to state objectives. So you really want to answer the question like, what are the people going to learn in this learning experience? What are they going to accomplish by the end of this? And the biggest mistake people make here is they prevent the very dry Bloom's taxonomy learning objectives that you would use to guide your design. These, you don't need to present your instructional design objectives to, the, to your audience. Those are for you to make your design decisions. When it comes to stating the objectives, you wanna keep it conversational. You know, today you'll learn about this. By the end of this, you'll know how to do this. Um, we don't need to say, you know, you will be able to recognize each of these three facets, like identify this and that. Again, keep it conversational, keep it simple. Just try to let them know where you're going with the learning experience. The third event is to stimulate recall. So from a cognitivist perspective, you, you learn by connecting new knowledge and new skills to knowledge and skills that you already have in your long-term memory. So your job as the, the instructional designer or the facilitator is you want to bring that pre-existing knowledge into the working memory so that when the new, you know, when you present the new information and the new knowledge and the new skills, it's much easier to connect those two pieces and encode that into long-term memory. So again, this is cognitive information processing theory. We don't need to dive super far into it. From a practical perspective though, you want to ask questions that cause people to draw on their pre-existing knowledge and, and maybe refer to that pre-existing knowledge throughout the course. So, you know, this might be as simple as referring to things that you learned in the previous lesson, or it might be referring to things that you would have learned like, you know, decades ago or years ago. The idea here is bringing any of that relevant info that, that the people have to the forefront so that it's easier to learn and connect the new information. And you wanna add that into your lesson plan or your design. All right, this fourth event is to present content. I think that most teachers, facilitators, and designers are familiar with this piece. The, you know, use a blend of media if you can. Um, chunk it well so that you're not jumping all over the place with your content. Try to keep it aligned with your objective so that you're not including anything irrelevant or unnecessary. Again, we don't need to spend a ton of time on presenting content. All right, the fifth event is to provide guidance. Um, I, a lot of designers get, I've seen get confused with this part, but really this is like the supporting, you know, scaffolding is one way to do this. Um, in, the, in, the beginning, in, in the beginning of the experience, you provide more guidance by maybe you, you help people see the reasoning behind certain answers or behind certain approaches. You give them practice questions that might start off more simple and you, and you, you know, you provide more information to the why and guide them to the right answer. That's what we're referring to here. Also, 
mnemonic devices. So like PEMDAS, when you're learning like the order of operations in math, in math class, it's like, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, yeah, just, just little tips and tricks to remember things, to learn the information, to practice the skills. You know, I have your tips about how to study or learn the material. Maybe you're suggesting that they make flashcards. Pieces like that, you know, pieces that aren't exactly presenting the content, but helping people learn that content in an efficient way, that's the guidance. And, and that is a necessary piece to designing a learning experience. All right, up next we have illicit performance. Another way to think about that, it, this is to provide practice opportunities. So people learn new skills when they can actually practice those skills. And it's up to you as a designer to make sure that those practice opportunities are there. Um, this is important, you know, it's low risk. If they fail a practice question or a practice quiz or something, it's not the end of the world. They can just try again. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all there really is to it. Make sure that people have a chance to practice. Don't just dump the content on them. Um, providing feedback, it goes hand in hand with providing those practice opportunities. You wanna provide the feedback as soon as possible. So when someone is off track or when they are answering questions incorrectly, uh, they can get feedback as to why and they can adjust accordingly to get closer to where they need to be and get closer to that instructional goal. Um, so that's, that's the real point here. Give people a chance to learn from their mistakes. You can give people all the practice in the world, but if they're practicing incorrectly and they don't know why or how to, how to, how to do it the right way, then you're not really helping them. So make sure that that feedback is tied to that performance or that practice very closely. Next up, we have assess performance. So this is usually comes at the, at the end of the experience. It's when we want to see, okay, did this person actually learn anything? And the, a common way to do this is with these multiple choice questions or assessments, but you can also do this with observation for things that are a bit more um, visual when you can see someone performing it correctly. And, and we can go much deeper into this, but the, that's the main idea here. When you're assessing that performance and, and seeing if someone actually did learn what they were supposed to learn, you're getting useful data for both the, the person going through that um, learning experience and the instructor or the designer. So the person going through the experience, if they, if they fail that assessment at the end, it gives them a pretty good idea of, okay, I'm not, I'm not ready. I need, to, I need to go back and study this information more. I need to look at some other sources, maybe get some coaching so that I can get on the right track with this. And if you're the designer and you're seeing people um, not pass that assessment, it can give you some useful data about how to improve that learning experience or improve that assessment to make it more in line with the learning objectives. And finally, one of my favorites, enhance transfer and retention. So, you know, you have this learning experience, maybe it's anywhere between 10 and 60 minutes long, maybe longer, maybe shorter, but you want people to take away what they learned and use it on the job or in real life. So one of the best ways to do this is to mirror the performance context. So imagine the situation where the person's going to have to actually use this new knowledge or these new skills and try to mirror that situation in the learning experience. So this is good for you know simulations when you when you really put someone in that same situation they would be in in real life, and then you you give them the guidance they need to use those those skills and that knowledge in that real world context. Um, job aids are another great way to do this. You know you just learned what you learned over this past 30 minutes or so. Now you can get it on this nice one page job aid and take that with you to the job. And you can see now that enhanced transfer. Use the job aid as like um, a connector between the learning experience and the actual job so you can quickly reference it without having to go back and spend another 30 minutes doing that learning experience over again whenever you need a quick refresher. And finally, yeah, this is the idea of relate the content to the real world situations, help people see how they'll be able to use what it is that they're learning in the real world. So I hope that helped. Those are Gagne's nine events. Again, they can be used in any order. You probably want to be thinking about these things at every stage of your design process when you actually are designing that experience. You wanna weave these things throughout. And with that being said, I have worked with clients and companies who've had storyboard templates that follow these events almost to a T. So it starts with getting that attention. It leads into stating those objectives 
then you know there's a section about stimulating recall and it kind of just goes through this like in order and that's completely fine especially if you are a newer instructional designer or you haven't designed a learning experience before just try following this in order and and t um, checking all the boxes and seeing how you do because this is a lot better than just you know presenting a 45 minute powerpoint presentation like kind of like what i'm doing now <laughs> not 45 minutes but you get the idea you can design something much more comprehensive and effective by um, addressing each one of gagne's nine events so if this was helpful please go ahead and like the video and if you are interested in becoming an instructional designer you can check out my full video on that topic which i will link in the description below so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video mm -hmm.